this video lecture, we will be solving this problem longest univalue path. In this problem, we are given the root of a binary tree and we have to return the length of the longest path where each node in the path has the same value. This path may or may not pass through the root. The length of the path between two nodes is represented by the number of edges between them. For instance, in this example, the longest path we can see starts from the root node which is 5 and ends at rightmost node which is also 5. And the length of this path is 2 because we have two edges along this line. So in the input we will be given a binary tree and in the output we have to return an integer representing the longest univalue path. So the number of nodes in the tree lies in the range from 0 to 10,000 while the value of any node in the tree may go from minus 1000 up to 1000 while the depth of the tree will not exceed 1000 or the maximum height of any typical tree will not exceed 1000. Let's better understand the problem statement using an example. So here we have an example of a binary tree which has six nodes and this is my root node and I want to find the longest univalue path in this tree. Starting from a root from here I have two ways to go. I check for the left child and then I check for the right child. I can see that the left child here does not match with the root. The left child has a value 4 while the root has a value 5 but for the right child the value matches and hence I move to the right child and Towards this right child, I keep on moving until my value matches till my last node. And this is one of the paths which I find and it is a univalue path. So the length of this path is true because we have two edges along this path. Then I may check for other nodes as well. Let's say for this node, the value for this node does not match uh, with the value for the right or for the left child so this cannot constitute any univalue path neither these nodes can form any univalue path hence the answer for this particular example is 2 that means the longest univalue path that we can have for this example is of length 2 fine so how we can solve this problem let's see the intuition in the next slide so let's try to build a solution for this problem so we know that our target is to find the longest univalue path in the given binary tree and if you are given that that univalue path may pass through the root or it may not pass through the root so let's take the example for this particular example we can see that if we look carefully the longest univalue path in this case is this and the length of this path is 4 so how we can find this length so let's think of it this way so let's say I I'm standing at the root node initially and I check for the left and for the right child. If the values match, then I want to find the longest univalue path in this left subtree and then I want to find the longest univalue path in this subtree. And let's say the longest in this subtree, that is left subtree, has a length of x while the longest univalue path in the right subtree has a value y. Then the longest univalue path for this root on which I am standing would be of length x plus y plus 2. Why I am adding 2 here? Because we are adding 2 more edges in the path that is this edge and this edge. Fine. So what will be the value for this particular case of x and y? You can see that in this subtree the longest univalue path which has a value of 5 is this that is 5 5 and it has a length of 1 hence x is 1 in this case so I will return 1 from here then for this subtree I can see that the longest univalue path is this because the values along this path matches with the value at the root node that is 5 and the length is 1 and I am returning 1 from here so 1 plus 1 would be 2 and then these chains are connected to the root node by two edges. The first edge is this and the second edge is this and hence that will constitute an extra length of 2 as well giving me a final length of 4. Hence this is the answer for the root node. Fine and it gives me the longest univalue path for this particular example and for this example the answer is indeed 4 and for any other root the answer is always less than 4.
Let's check that out. So for root node, the answer is 4. The length of longest univalue path, which is this path. Then, then for this node, it is 1 because this is the only path that I can take if I am allowed to move only left and right. So from a particular node, I cannot move to the parent node. I can just move to its left child and to the right child. And for this node, the answer is 0. For this node, answer is 0 because I do not have any child. So I cannot move to any univalue node. And for this node, I have 0. For this node, I have 1 because this is the path which I can take. And out of all these nodes, I can see that the root node has the largest value which is 4 and hence the answer is 4. So how would I solve this problem? How would I implement this solution? You can see that this gives me an intuition of a recursive solution. So let's define a function directional length which takes in the node and it gives me the length of the longest univalue path in the subtree of this node. And this is a recursive function. What it's going to, be, going to return me is the length and I will initially call this function for the root node which is this one and this function will recursively call itself for the left node and for the right node if and only if the values in the left and right child matches with the value of this root node. So for this particular test case, let's dry run this function. So initially this function directional length will be called for this root node. Then I will call this function directional length for the left child and for the right child or for the left subtree and for the right sub. Then I will call this function again for its left subtree and for the right sub. Similarly, I will call that I will call that function for the right subtree here that is for this node. So here you can see that I have two options for each node and now these functions corresponds to these last to these leaf nodes and here so for this node I have no right or left child so that means the length of the univalue path for this particular node will be zero so this function which was, which was which was called for this particular node will return me zero so it is returning zero here similarly this function is going to return me zero because it do not have any left or right sub so this will return zero similarly this subtree do not have any similarly this node do not have any left or right subtree so this function will again return zero and here at this level for this node so this function call corresponds to this node and i can see that the value here matches with the value of the left child that is this one so this will return me so this will return 1 to the parent child while in this case the value for this node matches with the value with the right child hence this function is again returning me 1 it is saying that the length of the univalue path this subtree is 1 similarly the length of the univalue path in this subtree is 1 so i am getting 1 from the left subtree and i am getting 1 from the right subtree and here i am standing at the root node then I will check if the value at the root node matches with the left node and with the right node, or the left child or and with the right child. So I observe that it matches with both of them. So 5 matches with this 5 and this 5 matches with this 5. So that will again contribute a plus 2 in the final answer. So 1 plus 1 plus 2 which is giving me 4 for this and we can see that out of all these values 4 is the largest value and hence 4 is the answer that is giving me the longest univalue path which I have in this particular binary tree and this path passes through the root and this path passes through the root so this is the path which we have here fine so that's how this problem is solved so this is a recursive function the base case will be when we reach a leaf node and the function will return the length of the univalue path which lies in the subtree of the given node. So let's implement this idea that we discussed here. So here is the function longest univalue path which takes in the root which takes in the root of the binary tree. So this answer variable is used to store the final answer. It is initialized to zero here and then I call this directional length function which I explained here and I pass in the root of the given binary tree in there. And let's see how this direction length function is behaving. So here we see that this direction length function takes in the root of the given tree and this is the base case that 
we have to handle which says that if we reach a leaf node or we have an empty tree then we return a zero otherwise i will recursively call the same function for the left sub tree and for the right sub tree here so and here i will declare two variables dir right and dir left which basically gives me the longest univalue path in the left sub tree and in the right sub tree then here i'm checking if so at this point the left and right variables contains the length of the longest univalue path in the left subtree so particular node let's say root i so this left and right will store the longest length in this subtree and in the right subtree so this is left subtree and this is right subtree then i want to find the longest univalue path for this entire subtree and for that i'm using these two variables here i'm checking if the value at the root node is matching with the root of the left subtree and here i'm making sure if we have a left sub if it is the case then the length of the univalue path increases by one year so i'm adding extra edge here so this subtree is returning me left so here i'm getting a left this left variable which i declared here and then i'm adding an edge here plus one why because the value here at the root node is matching with the value of the root node of this left side and hence the length of the univalue path increases by one similarly if we have a non empty right child and the value at the root node is matching with the value of the root of the right subtree then so if this returns right which corresponds to this right then this length will increase by 1 why because this edge is being added here so that's why i am adding right plus 1 to the right length so now this dir right will contain the entire length and this dir left will contain this entire length finally the answer variable will be updated by the total length of the univalue path that we obtained here and finally i will return the max of the left and the right length why because that's what this function returns it gives me the maximum length of the univalue path that starts from this node root node or in the subtree of this node hence after we end this function the answer variable will store the maximum length that we have the maximum length of univalue path so that's how this function is working let's see the time and space complexity this implementation so you can see that it the given solution is just one of the traversals for the given binary tree or a depth for search we can say and the traversal of a binary tree takes in the linear amount of time that is big o of n while the space complexity of this solution may go up to big o of h where h is the height of the tree why so this space complexity represents the does not represents the auxiliary space but the stack space that we consume since we are recursively calling a function we are using stack to store those functional calls and the maximum number of functional function calls that we may have for this particular for any particular tree may go up to the height of that tree fine and the height of a binary tree is log log n to the base 2 fine while the auxiliary space consumed is constant we are not using any auxiliary space so that's the time and space complexity let's jump into the code implementation so okay so this is the solution class which has two functions the first function is longest univalue path function which takes in the root of the binary tree and it will return me the length of the longest univalue path while the second function is directional length function which is used to find the directional length in the left and right subtree and it will be used to store the answer and it will be used to store the final answer then and this is the tree node which we have defined for our binary tree so here i will initialize my answer to 0 and i will call this directional length function and pass in the root node so let's see the working of this directional Length function. So first we'll handle the base case that is root is equal to null. Then I will return. Then I will find the directional length for the left subtree and the directional length for the right subtree. Then I'll use integers to store the length values for the current subtree, which is rooted at this root. Here I'm checking if the value at the current root is same as the value of the root node of the left subtree. If it is the case, then I will update this directional left. value for the current root and same goes for the right sub finally i will update my answer variable 
with the current length of the univalue path which we have obtained for this subtree rooted at the root node and then I will return the maximum of left and right. So this is how this function will update our answer variable which I declared here to find to store the longest univalue path or the path which has largest number of edges and the nodes constitutes the nodes holds the same value. And I will finally return my answer right from here. So this is the implementation in C++ language. Let's see the implementation in other languages. So this is the implementation in Java language and this is the implementation in Python language. So, so that's all for this video. If you like the video, then hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel and give your feedback in the comments below. And you can watch the entire playlist which I created for the medium problems of lead code. And I have added the link in the description below. So make sure to check it out. I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.